to you my will I give to you I'll do what you say do use me Lord. show someone the way and an name that you have joined me today for your season of change on the Word Network. Look, I want you to go to my website, www.davidalexanderbullock.com. I want to connect with you. I want to pray for you. I want to seek God on your behalf. I believe, as I say every week, that this year is your year. It is your season. You are in the season of change. You know, one of the hardest things it is for us to do, brothers and sisters, is change. And sometimes change is hard because we lose faith, we lose heart. It's dark, it hurts, we're in pain. There are trials, there are tribulation, the enemy is on our case. We are depressed, we are oppressed, we feel used and abused. And I want to share from you today from the Bible from the Holy Scripture, a story so familiar that just encourages me all the time. And I believe that it will encourage and inspire you so that you can move into your change. I want to tell you today, I want to admonish you today to never give up because your change is on the way. Luke chapter 8 verse 43 reminds us as we read there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years she spent all of her money on doctors but none of them could cure her but one day she came up behind jesus she touched the fringe of his clothes immediately her bleeding stopped jesus looked around he said who touched me Everybody denied it, not I. Peter said, Master, the crowd surrounds you and they press on you. But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling, falling down before him. And she declared in the presence of all the people, I was the one that touched you. And I was immediately healed. And look at what it says, beloved, in the last verse 48. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. This woman in this scripture today, I never really admired her the way that I do now. Because sometimes when we read this scripture, we are so focused on the words of Jesus and the work of Jesus, that we miss the powerful testimony of the woman in the text. Typically, when people think about this woman who had this hemorrhage, who could not stop menstruating, who could not stop bleeding for 12 years, 
they, they run immediately to the end of the text. And what they say is that they say, Jesus said to her, your faith has made you whole. And indeed today, beloved, faith is important. We know Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And surely we should have the faith and we should keep the faith and we should hold on to our faith. Our faith creates a point of contact with God. And so it is right for us to accentuate and to magnify the testimony of faith in this text. But there is something else in this text for us today. Now, oftentimes, if, if we're not talking about faith in the text, we're talking about God's faithfulness in the text. She reached out and touched Jesus with faith, but Jesus healed her because of her faith, and that proves to us in this context, in every circumstance and experience of our lives, that God is faithful to respond to our faith. And so the faith that we have connects with God's faithfulness. Notice here in the text, Jesus does not get mad. He does not charge her. She does not have to make an appointment. He doesn't ask her to call the secretary. He doesn't put her on the back burner. She's not waiting in the lobby. He doesn't ask for her VIP credentials. But merely at the touch through faith, God responds to faith by connecting faithfulness to faith. Oh, yes, this, these are two things that we often see in this scripture. And I, and I want to today to tell you, if you're watching, to keep your faith and to know that God is faithful. But there is more for us in this scripture today. Today, what I want to focus on is not the faith of the woman, nor is it the faithfulness of God. But I want to focus in on the attitude of this bleeding woman. She, she, had been, she had been bleeding for 12 years, and, 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 and we can't be cute about it. She, she was bleeding, but she was also stinking. She was bleeding, but she was also identified and labeled as an outcast, as somebody to be looked over, to be left out. She was amongst the least. I can imagine in my imagination spiritually that she was alienated from friends and family, had strained relationships with people in the community. I don't know who's watching me today and who I'm talking to, but, but all of us at times in our lives uh, find that it, 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 we look for family and friends and they may not be there, and we may look for support from other human beings, but instead of lifting us up, they tend to pull us down. This woman for 12 years, not 12 months, not 12 moments, not 12 hours, not 12 minutes, not 12 days, but for 12 years was not only bleeding and stinking and labeled as an outcast, but she was on her own, but watch the power of the character of this woman. We, we, we know her condition. She had the issue of blood, but, but don't miss her character despite the fact that she had been going through for 12 years, uh, she did not stop looking uh, for a breakthrough. I, I, I came today to, to, to encourage somebody. You, 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 you've been looking for God to do something for you, and, and you've been looking for years. Yeah, you've been watching the Word Network for years. You've been going to church for years. You've been in Bible study for years. You've been praying on your knees for years, and, and, and sometimes we can miss what God has, not because God doesn't have it, but because we stop looking for it. Yeah, this woman, this woman had an attitude. That say, I'm not going to let my condition hold me back. I'm not going to let 
My stigma keep me behind. I'm better than this, and I'm moving forward in this. And so after 12 years, uh, she kept looking. Watch, watch now. Watch, watch. It's not just the time, the testimony of the time, uh, but there also this woman has the testimony of trauma. Because she had been to doctors, the Bible says. She, she had been to many doctors, so many doctors that the doctors she had been to uh, had used up all the money that she had. Oh, yes, uh, my, my brothers and sisters, I, you know, I don't know who's, who's watching me here, but, but it's one thing to go and look for relief and not get it. But it's another thing to go look for relief and pay for it uh, and not get it. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, don't let your, what you have sown and have not received back yet be the reason for you to stop pressing forward and keep looking for what you're expecting God to do. I, I'm telling you right now, you, you got to sow. You got to keep sowing. 12 years, many doctors, 12 years, uh, many soothsayers, 12 years, uh, 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 many conventions, 12 years, many conferences, 12 years, many gifts, many offerings, 12 years, uh, 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 much sowing, but still the same condition. But I'm telling you today, you got to keep looking, uh, even if what you have sown uh, has not received a harvest, because in due season you will reap if you faint not. Yeah, watch this, watch this. You got to have that attitude that allows you to keep moving forward. She, she, she'd been, been bleeding for 12 years. She had been to many doctors. And, 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 and here, here's the next piece of this because it is your season of change, but you can't stop looking for your change to come. I heard the song say, it has been a long time coming, but my change is on the way. Yes, your change is on the way. You're in your season of change, but you've got to be like this woman and keep moving forward even if it does not change, believing my change is on the way. Now, 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 somewhere in here, 12 years of bleeding and 12 years of doctors, uh, but one day she gets in the right place at the right time because Jesus uh, is in the vicinity. Yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let me, let me say this to you. Don't, don't ever let the failures of others convince you uh, that God uh, cannot send uh, your blessing, redemption, or reward. Just because others failed me in the past, uh, it does not mean that there isn't someone in my future that can do uh, what others could not done. I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you're sick and you've, you've been to many doctors. I want to encourage you to keep praying, keep sowing, and keep going and looking. Maybe uh, uh, you're, you're, you're heartbroken and, and you've been done wrong. You feel abused and misused. But let me tell you, the dogs of the past may have given you fleas, but that does not mean that there isn't a knight in shining armor in your future. Let me tell you, you may have been in job interviews and they may have made you sit and wait and you didn't get the call back. But I hear this woman saying, you just got to keep showing up because you never know. When God is in the right place and when God is going to move at the appointed time. Yeah, she, she was there. Jesus was there. You know, he had a reputation. And, and, so, and so she didn't ask permission. Yeah, she, 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 she didn't ask uh, 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 people if she could touch him. I love this woman today. She didn't ask people if she had to make an appointment. The Bible doesn't even say that she asked, you know, who are those folks up there with him? Uh, are those his leaders? Or, uh, 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 what, what time is he speaking? What, what time is he preaching? What time is the service? No, the Bible says she got up in the crowd. And, 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 and she used the crowd to provide cover for herself until she could get close enough to him just to reach out and touch him. Oh, can I, can I help you today? It's your season of change. Sometimes uh, you got to just do what God is calling you to do, uh, and you got to ask people for forgiveness uh, even if you don't ask them for permission. I'm trying to tell you, sometimes you can't ask folk if you can. You just got to know that you 
you have to, and then when God blesses you, you can turn around later and say, I'm sorry I just busted in the room. I'm sorry I didn't wait my turn. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't wear the right clothes. I'm sorry I didn't say the right thing. But all I needed to do was get what God had for me. Your season of change, you got to have, yeah, I like this woman. She had an attitude. Uh, 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 she, she, she did not let the situation and circumstance of her deliverance pass her by because she wanted to be respectable. Oh, that, that's a word for somebody that's been saved a long time. You know, you saved and not really blessed because you're too respectable. You, you saved and, and, you, and you broke because you're too respectable. You saved and don't have that position in ministry because when you get your time to shine, you won't shine. But you got to know how to turn on the light when you get the platform. Yeah, yeah, she didn't ask permission. Later on, she's going to ask for forgive, forgiveness. She's going to say, I'm sorry, that was me, but she already healed at that point. Uh, yeah, she, she and watch this. She didn't ask for permission. She reached out, touched the hem of his garment. I, I love her today because she did not, yeah, have to get all up on Jesus. She, she, didn't, have to, she didn't even have to talk to him. She didn't have to tell Jesus her name. She didn't have to get a photo with Jesus. She didn't have to get a selfie. She, she didn't have to get a response from Jesus. I, I don't need you to talk back to me. I just need you to heal me when I touch you. Can I, can I help somebody today? It's your season of change. You know, uh, one of the reasons why change is hard for us is not just because we won't keep moving forward and not just because we're too busy asking for permission instead of moving forward in our anointing. But change eludes many of us because we are too self-important. Yeah, we, 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 we got to have a meeting on the right day at the right time with the right person. Y'all ain't going to help me. We, you, you, we, we, we've got to show up, and they've got to have our name spelled right and our parking space, and, and they have to be uh, uh, waiting for our coming. But can I tell you this? You can get blessed by God even without an official meeting or official recognition. She reached out and touched the hem of his garment. It reminds me of when Naaman got to Elijah and he got all in his self, in his feelings. He said, surely the prophet would have come out and shook my hand. Surely he would have come out and called my name. Doesn't he know who I am? Watch this. I don't need you to know who I am to be blessed by you. Uh, don't you know people can bless you and not know you? People can make opportunity for you and not know your story, not know your struggle, not know your background, not know what you've been through, but they can just look at you and make opportunity for you. God wants to move you into change, but don't be so self-centered that you've got to have recognition before you get recovery. Yeah, she, she got healed. The Bible says she walked away. And she walked away. I bet she walked away smiling. And Jesus says, somebody touch me. Lord, have mercy. Peter and all the disciples looked around. They say, it's a whole lot of people here, Jesus. What do you mean somebody touched you? Everybody is touching you. Ah, uh, yeah, everybody's touching me, Jesus said, but, but only one person touched me with an attitude for an anointing. Only one person touched me believing uh, that I could heal them. Only one person touched me and had a desire born of drama that would not let the touch be lost in the moment. Yeah, it's your season of change. He looked around. The woman was trembling. She said, after she could not hide herself, it was I. She looked in front of all the people, said, I touched you, and I was healed immediately. I love it here because Jesus says, the Bible says Jesus looked at her and said, daughter, you didn't have permission, but that's all right. He says, daughter, you didn't, you didn't make an appointment with my adjutant or my secretary, but that's all right. He said, daughter, it's okay. I want you to go in peace because your faith in this moment have made you whole. It's your season to change, brothers and sisters. And let me leave you with this parting 
word of inspiration. If you want God to change your situation, then you got to maximize the moment. You know, God always shows up in moments. God is always working in moments because the Bible says she touched him in a moment. Yeah, and she was healed in a moment. Yeah, and if you read your Bible, you notice that uh, it does not matter, yeah, how long you have been going through because the Lord will work in the middle and in the midst of a moment. I'm reminded of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in a moment in the middle of a fiery furnace. But the Bible says in that moment, while they were in that furnace, that the Lord showed up in that moment. Yeah, and in that moment, the Lord took the fire up out of the furnace. Yes, it reminds me, yes, uh, of uh, Daniel uh, that was inside the lion's den. Well, uh, the Bible says, uh, yes, uh, that he was thrown in, uh, in, uh, in a moment. Uh, well, uh, but when the morning came, uh, and Darius asked him, uh, Daniel, are you still there? Daniel said, the Lord I serve came in the middle of a moment and shut the lion's mouth. What am I saying today? If you're watching me today, well, I'm saying today that God can turn it around for your good uh, in the middle of a moment. Uh, do I have anybody watching here? Yes, uh, I don't care today how sick you have been. Uh, well, I don't care today what you're going through. Uh, well, I don't care today what your situation is. Uh, the Lord will, he will meet you uh, in the middle of your moment. So whatever you do, please, please don't miss your moment. Yes, you ought to reach out to me right now. You ought to reach to the screen right now. You ought to get up out of your seat right now. You ought to come on closer. You ought to turn your iPod up right now. You ought to turn your phone up right now. And lift your hands and say, Lord, in this moment, I need a touch from you. Yes, I'm glad today because the God I serve, he will, he will, he will, he will, he will, he will turn it around. I know he will. Yes. Let me pray for you. Yes. Let me plead on, on your behalf for the Lord. Yes. 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 Let me call to God. Yes. Because the God I serve he will, yeah, he will turn it around. Depression's being broke. Sickness is being recovered. Money's coming to your pocket. Yes, it is your season of change. You ought to say it with me. It is my season of change. Yes. Yeah. Look, if you're watching me now, you ought to be like this woman. You ought to be like this woman. 
this woman, we don't know her name. Yes. But we know her character. Everybody around you has given up. You've given up on yourself. You believed in change. But you thought your change wasn't going to come. Let me tell you, keep believing. Keep reaching. Don't worry about the permission. Don't worry about the appointment. God can move in the middle of a moment. I want you, I want you right now to, to stretch your hands. I want you right now to agree with me. I want to pray for you. And I want to connect with you. I want you to covenant with David Alexander Bullock in your season of change. We got wars and rumors of wars. We've got bad economy. We got high medical bills, high insurance. We got high depression. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm telling you, it's your season. And I want to pray for you. I want you to go to the website, www.davidalexanderbullock.com. I want you to connect with me. I want you to go to my Facebook page, David Alexander Bullock. Follow me on Twitter. Become a partner with this telecast. We believe that God works inside the sanctuary and also on streets and in the suites because God can change it and turn it around for your good. Can I pray for you? A wonderful change has come over me. A wonderful change has come over come over me. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray right now that those who are watching, that God, they are at the point of change, that you would allow them to be like this woman and to keep moving forward, to know that you move in a moment, that immediately when their faith meets your faithfulness and their attitude for an anointing produces a breakthrough, they will look back and wonder how they made it over. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Again, this has been your season of change with David Alexander Bullock. I can't wait to see you next week.